Okay, so we continue uh, questions about sensitivity analysis related to changes in the objective function coefficients. So we're focusing on the objective profit maximization, 350x1 plus 300x2. And here is another question. Uh, what if objective coefficient for aqua spa for the first variable, x1, decreases to 250, or alternatively we could say decreases by 100? So if we consider this, 250 is not within the uh, range of optimality. Right. The range of optimality, which was, if you recall, right, it is shown here, 300 to 450, right? Or alternatively, alternatively, we can say, right, this decrease by 100, right, decrease by 100 is not less than or equal uh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, um, it's not less than or equal the allowable decrease, which is equal 50, right? We're not within the allowable decrease or we're below, below the lower limit of the uh, range of optimality. So, so what do we know from this? So we can no longer expect the optimal solution, the old optimal solution, 122.78, right? Uh, we can no longer expect it to remain optimal. Right, so we should say, so the old optimal solution might no longer be optimal, right? This is what we know from this. Now, I want to emphasize one thing here. Um, it's not certain that the optimal solution will change, right? This, this, the, uh, the, this is not what we should expect for sure. It, typically, it will change, but there are some cases where despite the fact that we go outside of the range of optimality, outside of this range, the optimal solution might still remain the same, right? So what we really know is that within the range of optimality, the solution is guaranteed, the optimal solution is guaranteed to remain the same, but outside of it, we just don't know. We shouldn't expect it to be the same, but we really don't know it could be the same, it could be different, right? So, so now, um, what else can we say? Well, we, since uh, we no longer have the, uh, this as an optimal solution, right? I don't know what will happen uh, to the optimal objective function value, right? I know the optimal objective function value is going to be 250, right? Not 350, it will be 250 here in the first coefficient times x1 plus 300 times x2. But I no longer know what x1 and x2 will be, right? Because we just said it. It might change. The optimal solution might change, right? So what can we say? Well, we actually can say something about the optimal objective function value. We just cannot say exactly what will happen. So what exactly can we say? Well, first of all, um, we can say, what if this decrease 100, we did it gradually? What if first we decreased by exactly allowable decrease, right? So um, if we decrease the objective or um, if we decreased the objective coefficient by only first, right? First, by only the allowable decrease, which is 50, right? Well, what would we know? Well, uh, decreasing by 50 is within allowable decrease, right? That decrease would be down to 300. Then uh, we would know the, that um, the, the old optimal solution, right, which is this, Right. would still be optimal, right? And so the optimal objective function value, the, so the optimal objective function value would be, would be what? 
would be, right, I decreased by 50, so it becomes 300, right, times x1 plus 300 times x2, right? So in this case, the optimal objective function values actually is around number 60,000, right? So if I just decreased by 50, that would be the optimal objective function value. Well, but I'm decreasing by 100, so I need to decrease by an additional 50, right? Uh, I don't know what will happen because then I will be outside of the allowable decrease. I will be decreasing by more than 50, right? But I don't know what will happen to the profit, but I know for sure it's not going to increase, right? So decreasing the objective coefficient further um, can only decrease the optimal I decrease the optimal objective function value more, right? Uh, so, so what do I know? So I know that actually 60,000 is an upper bound on the optimal objective function, right? Again, right? So what did I do here? Instead of just decreasing by 100, what I did is I said, let me decrease first by 50. 50, which is allowable decrease. When I decrease by 50, I know the old optimal solution would still be optimal. So the optimal objective function value would be, I can recalculate it using this optimal solution, would be 60, right? So I would know already the first drop in the optimal profit in this case. Now, if I, I remember I decreased just by 50, if I decreased by more than this, I know, I don't know what will happen to the solution, but I'm sure the, that the uh, objective function value, which is maximized, is not going to increase when I'm decreasing a coefficient here, right? So it may only decrease further. I'm not sure actually it will, if it will decrease or it will remain the same, 60,000, but from what I, from my, oh, oh, this, I can conclude that this 60,000 is actually an upper bound on the optimal objective function value. So basically I can say, whatever the, the new solution is, its profit is not going to be more than 60. It might be 60, it might be less. 60,000 might be less. However, I can actually do even more. I can do another thing. I can observe that this solution, right, Right? When I decrease by 100, again, I'm decreasing by full 100, is no longer or might, might no longer be optimal, right? Um, right? So when we decrease by 100, solution the old optimal solution might no longer be optimal, but it still be, right? It is still feasible, right? Consider this, right? So um, we haven't changed anything in the constraints, and this was the optimal solution. When this was, right, the, the optimal solution, and we have not changed anything in the constraints, the same limits, the same resources, then this solution, if it's, even if it's no longer optimal, it still will be feasible, right? So if we calculate the, this, the value of this solution according to the new objective, right? So its objective function value, notice I'm not saying optimal, this is just objective function value of this solution, 12278, which was previously optimal, right? So its objective function value, which is 250 x1 plus 300 x2, right? Which will now be 53,900, right? This objective function value um, is definitely achievable, right? Because I have a feasible solution that gives me, with the new coefficient, 250 here, right? With this, the 
degrees, I have a solution that definitely achieves 53,900. But remember, we are maximizing, and the solver might say, wait a second, this is one feasible solution, I have a better one, I will increase this profit further, we'll, the solver will try to maximize the objective, and we'll see this as one option, but if it finds a better solution, it's going to say this is not optimal, it's going to say there's another solution with a higher profit value. If it's the other one is optimal, it must be better than this, right? Or at least the same. So what I can say, right, so this objective function value, 250 uh, x, uh, x1 plus 300 x2 for the old optimal solution, right, is a lower bound on the optimal objective function value. Why am I saying it's a lower bound? Because um, if I can achieve it at one feasible point, then I know the objective, the maximum profit will be this, 53,900 or better, right? It would be this if this was the optimal solution, but if there is another solution that's better, then this is at least a lower bound. I'm sure the profit in the optimal solution will be uh, at least 53,900, maybe more, right? So notice what I have here from those two things, right? So, so I actually determined two values, the 60,000 from the first, uh, uh, from the first uh, analysis, first bit of analysis here, 60,000 is an upper bound on the optimal objective function value. 53,900 is a lower bound on the optimal objective function value. So if I put those two, right, putting the above two facts together, the optimal objective function value will be between right between this 53900 and this 60000 right between this and this right so i know um, i know um, i don't know exactly what the total profit will be but i know the change will be such that the new optimal profit optimal objective function value right will be somewhere between this and this it might be 53900 it might be 60000 or it might be any number in between the two of those okay another question what if objective coefficient again for aqua spa increases to 500 so it increases by 150 so again you will see well, this is outside of our range, right? 500 is above the upper limit or increase by 150 is more than an increase here of 100, allowable increase. So what we can say is, right, 500 is not within the range of optimality, which is 300 to 450, right? Again, alternatively, increase of 150 is not right less than or equal is not within the allowable increase of 100 right so so again the optimal the old optimal solution might no longer be optimal right might no longer be optimal. So again, as before, right, uh, we are outside of the range of optimality. We shouldn't expect this to be an optimal solution, but it might still be optimal. We just don't know. We have to resolve the problem to know the new optimal solution. However, again, as before, uh, we can recognize what? We can try to break down this increase by 150, first increase by allowable increase, and see what happens, right? So if we increased the objective coefficient first by only the allowable increase of 100, right? So instead of by 150, we're increasing it by 100, right? Uh, the optimal, the old optimal solution, right? The old optimal solution 
would still be optimal. So, right, uh, it's um, uh, so um, right. Uh, we would know the optimal objective function value would be would be what right would be not 350 x1 but 400 right we increased by 100 so it becomes 450 and so this value would be uh, 78300 right um, now we know again increasing the objective coefficient further right this coefficient 350 we just increased it by 100 but we were supposed to increase it by 150 so if we continue increasing it right we don't know what will happen to the optimal solution but we know this is increasing unit profit of a product so we can increase the total profit further but we don't know by how much right so increasing the objective coefficient further right um, uh, might or can only increase the optimal objective function value more right so so what so in that case this must be this value is a lower bound on the optimal objective function value right from this and we can do again another another thing right we can say okay now this was if we increase by 100 okay increasing the objective color or so when we increase the objective coefficient by 150, right, the full 150, the solution, solution that was previously optimal, the right, the old, the old optimal solution might no longer be optimal as we said before but it is still but not bit sorry still feasible right it is still feasible so it's ob optimal object so it's sorry not optimal so it's objective function value so it's objective function value which is now, right, we increased by 150, it becomes 500, right, the new profit is 500, 500 is one. This value, which if you calculate, you'll find out it is 84,400, right? This ob ob objective function value will be A lower bound on the optimal objective function value. So why is this, right? How am I claiming this? Right. So again, when we increase the aqua spa profit to 500 or increase it by 150, we're no longer within the range of optimality. We don't know what will happen with the solution. Right? But we know we have at least one feasible solution. With this solution, 122.78 is still feasible for all the constraints in the original model. If it's still feasible, we definitely can achieve a profit of 84,400. But it might not be optimal. So if there is an optimal solution, the optimal solution is the best of all. So it must be at least as good, maybe better, than this one. So it might must find profit that is higher than 84,400 or at least the same, right? The new optimal solution must beat every other solution or at least be, be as good as any other solution. So that's why the, the value of this feasible solution, value of any feasible solution is a lower bound on the optimal objective function value. So of course, this one also is a lower bound. 
right? So again, now in this case, notice what happened. Previ previously, we had a lower bound and an upper bound, but in this case, we actually got a lower bound, one, one lower bound, and we got another lower bound, right? This is one, this is a lower bound, you'll actually highlight it, and this is a lower bound, right? I found two lower bounds, okay? So, so what happens, right, what happens is when I have two lower bounds, uh, well, uh, I should consider just a stronger one, right? Because if I'm saying I will go at least to this, and the other one who says, no, 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 I will go even further, I will go at least to that, right? Then overall I can say, right, so putting the above uh, together, I can say, right, so this is really... Right, putting the above uh, facts together, I can say that 84,400 is a lower bound on the optimal objective function value, right? Because it is even higher, so it kind of supersedes the 78,300. Uh, so, so I just get a lower bound, but at least I know something. Again, I don't know what the actual optimal objective function value will be, but I know it will be 84,400 or it will be more than this, right? So these were, again, examples of changing just one coefficient um, when we went beyond the uh, range of optimality. We either decreased below the lower limit or we increased above the upper limit. And in that case, we knew that the optimal solution uh, is no longer guaranteed to remain optimal, the old optimal solution, right? And But uh, we couldn't calculate in those cases the actual total object, optimal objective function value, the new value of the profit in this case. But what we could calculate is sometimes just a lower bound and sometimes a lower bound and an upper bound on the value. So we could basically have some kind of estimation. And again, without resolving the model. If we resolve the model by... Right, changing this coefficient 350 to 500, we would know exactly what's the new solution, and we would know exactly how much profit it gives us. But at least, you know, from this quick analysis, we can tell without resolving the full model, it will be at least 84,400.